Hi there, and welcome to this beginner's video all about oil painting materials and techniques. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the most popular questions that I get about oil painting, including how to mix your own colors, how to choose the right materials, and how to create different looks and techniques within your own work. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the different kinds of oil paints there are and how to choose the right one for your painting. Now, when choosing an oil paint, you should consider the color, the consistency, and the finish. Some oil paints are thick and opaque and work really well for bold, vibrant colors, whereas others are thinner and more transparent and are better suited for more delicate areas or building up color over time. Along the same lines, some are glossy, which makes for great use of vibrant, shiny colors, whereas others are matte and velvety. When it comes to myself, I often find that transparent oil paints allow me a lot more flexibility in my work. Because the transparent oil paints allow light to pass through them, I'm able to layer them over one another to create rich, luminous colors without losing the lines and details of the underlying layers. I also love using transparent oil paints to build up the depth in the shadows of my portraits. To tell if an oil paint is opaque or transparent before buying it, look at the bottle or the packaging in the store, and most of them will tell you what its finish is. They'll say whether it's glossy or matte, transparent or opaque, and a lot of times they'll even tell you stuff like it's tinting power or it's light fastness. Now, if you don't see it on the bottle, you can always look at the manufacturer's website or run your own color tests at home. Now, as an oil painter, you're going to need a variety of different materials in addition to your oil paints. The big ones that we're going to talk about today are your mediums, canvases, and brushes. Now, your brushes are an essential part of the oil painting process, and you're going to want a variety of sizes and styles. The most popular ones you're probably going to see out there are your round brushes, your flats, your brights, and your filberts. Round brushes are really versatile. I like to hold them perpendicular to my canvas when I'm working on something really detailed or hold them to the side whenever I want to blend or fill in large swatches of color. Flat brushes are versatile and are great for creating broad, even strokes. Brights are very similar to flat brushes, but have shorter bristles and allow for more control. Filbert brushes are like a happy combination between flat and round brushes, and I find them really great for creating smooth, soft transitions and for blending. Personally, I like to use one of each of these brushes in both a stiff bristle and a soft bristle. I also have each of these brushes in both large sizes and small sizes. Now, my stiff bristle brushes I like to use for more textured and absorbent surfaces like oil paper or canvas, whereas my softer bristle brushes I like to reserve for smoother surfaces like panels or gesso boards. Speaking of panels and papers and canvases, these are all different types of surfaces that you can paint on. Now, canvas is probably the first one that comes to your mind. It's tightly woven fabric that's then stretched over a wooden frame. Canvas is super versatile. It's easy to find in stores, people are familiar with it, it's easy to hang on a wall or display on an easel, but it's definitely not your only option. One of my favorites is panel. Panel is another common surface for oil painters to work on, and it's typically made from wood or masonite uh, or some other material that's then primed with a layer of gesso. Now, I want to show you my favorite ones to work on. I like to buy these ones from Blick. No, this is not sponsored. This is just um, me sharing some of my favorite things, but it's a completely smooth surface. It's really fun to work on, and it's currently my favorite surface to work on. Um, it's really good for detailed or realistic pieces. And um, yeah, it's just, it's really fun. All right, the last one, uh, and I'm always surprised by how many people don't know that this is an option, but it's oil paper. It's less common than the other ones that we talked about, but it is another one of my favorites. Oil painting paper is specifically made to handle oil paint. Um, so you definitely don't want to paint on just your regular printer paper. 
Uh, because it's paper, it's really great for quick studies or sketches, or especially when you're new and you're trying out uh, oil for the first time. When you are painting on canvas and you're first learning, you're gonna go through a ton of canvases. And one, that costs a lot of money, and two, it takes up a lot of space. I really like oil paper because um, it solves both of those problems. It's a lot less expensive and it doesn't take up as much space. Now the only downside, um, I'll show you, this is oil paper, the brand that I use, it's Arches Oil Paper. The only downside is that sometimes I find oil paper, because it's so absorbent, it can hold so much oil, it often takes a lot longer to dry than some of the other surfaces I work on. Overall, the type of surface that you choose is going to depend a whole lot on your personal preference and the type of project that you're working on. Now, the only way to figure out what works best for you is to try them all out. Have fun with it and give yourself room to explore, experiment, and don't worry about the pressure of creating something perfect. Each one of the surfaces that we talked about today are wildly different from one another and each have their own list of pros and cons. All right, so let's get into the next thing we're gonna talk about, and that is mediums. Mediums are substances that you can mix in with your oil paints to change its consistency, its finish, or its drying time. Now, I only use two different mediums, and I'm gonna show them to you right now. First is Gamblin uh, Non-Toxic Solvent-Free Fluid. This is the medium I like to use, and for my thinner, I like this um, Green for Oil Non-Toxic Thinner. Now, I'm super sensitive to smells, um, and I like to work with non-toxic materials as much as possible. So, um, yeah, these are the two that I really like to use. Talking about thinners and mediums can often get confusing because in a lot of ways, they're very similar, and in a lot of other ways, they're very different. But in general, thinners are a liquid that you use to dilute your paint and change its consistency, whereas mediums are a liquid or a gel that you add to your paint to change its properties. Typically, you use thinners early on in your painting and you use mediums, wait, did I say that right? Thinners early on, mediums later. But do know, you don't have to use either of these to get started with oil paint. You can paint with paint straight out of the tube. And in fact, if you're just starting out, I do recommend that you do that so that you get used to the feeling of the paint and how it works before you ever add any mediums to it. All right, in addition to the items that we just talked about, there's a few other things you're gonna want when starting out with oil painting. The first is a palette. Now, I like to use this, it's gray disposable palette paper. And I just peel off a sheet every time I want a new one. Why do I like this? Two reasons. One, I'm lazy. Um, I love that I can just rip it off and be done with it. And two, it I love it's gray. So it gives me a solid mid-tone whenever I'm starting out so that my color mixing is more accurate and speeds up time. All right, so that's number one. The next thing you're probably gonna want is a palette knife. Now, this is really great for not only mixing paint, but also applying paint on your canvas in really fun ways. The third thing that you're definitely gonna want are old rags or paper towels handy. Um, this is not only necessary for cleaning your brushes uh, after you're done, but also you're gonna wanna wipe off the paint from your brush as you're painting. So I always have old rags laying around. All right, now that we have all the materials out of the way, you are ready to start painting. Let's start talking about some techniques. One of the most common techniques with oil painting is blending. Now blending is when you take two colors and create a seamless transition between them. This might sound so simple that you're like, why am I even bringing this up? But I promise you, um, especially for beginner artists and even people who've been painting for a while, blending, uh, blending can take some time to master. Now, one of my favorite techniques for blending is um, using a very soft filbert brush and applying pressure in between the two colors at a diagonal angle and so, 
you know what, let me just show you. <laughs> All right, so here's a quick work in progress that I pulled out to show you exactly how I blend. Now, notice on the eyes, there's a pretty harsh line between this pink and the more purpley color. And all I'm doing is going in with my filbert brush and I am very lightly, like I call it tap, tap, tapping. Like it's, it's more tapping than it is going in with a brush, but I'm just lightly tapping at an angle and I'm going in opposite directions, um, blending those two colors in. Now notice every time I take away my paintbrush, I'm actually wiping it off on a rag that I have set up next to me. Um, it's, I'm always going in with a dry brush to blend. And this method makes it really easy whether I'm working on a panel, a canvas, or on oil paper. Now you might hear people tell you, never blend your colors on a canvas. Use transitional shades instead. Now you're free to use transitional shades. I do as well, uh, but I also absolutely love blending my paints on my canvas. Um, I mentioned the soft filber brush and I showed you guys how I do that. I also wanna point out that on a rough surface, I do tend to use a rougher, stiffer brush. Um, so when I'm, whereas when I'm on a smooth surface, I use the softer brushes. Try to match my brush to my surface. Hopefully that makes sense. Another common technique is impasto, which is the process of applying heavy textured layers of paint to create bold three-dimensional effects in your work. It's a really cool way to create depth and uh, texture in your paintings, and it can easily be done using a brush, a palette knife, or any other found object that you can find around you. Now, one of the last techniques is probably my favorite, and it has to do with what we talked about when we went over the paints. It has to do with the transparency of paints. And that technique is glazing. Glazing is super simple. To glaze, you just need to mix a little bit of your paint with your medium and apply the mixture over top your previous paint. Now, I use glazing all the time in my work, sometimes for more serious things like adjusting uh, the skin tones on a portrait and sometimes for more fun things like um, taking a black and white painting, uh, neon and crazy colors and fun. It's a really, um, it's just a really fun technique with endless possibilities. The last technique that we're going to talk about today is another one of my favorites and this is alla prima. Now alla prima is an Italian term that means something closely to at first or all at once. And basically it refers to painting all in one go. You're painting wet into wet and you're not waiting for layers to dry in between. Alla Prima is a direct and spontaneous method of painting that really leans on an artist's intuitive ability to create. I find it really fun. It's, uh, it's a technique that kind of leans more into the looseness of painting, um, kind of forces you to capture the essence of what you're painting versus really concentrating on something super detailed. Now, creating your own alla prima is super easy. All you need to do is start with thinner layers first and then build up your colors and your paint um, on top of those layers without waiting for them to dry. All right, that's it for this tutorial and chat about different techniques and materials when it comes to oil painting. I hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you've taken something from this or gained the confidence to go out and try um, some of these techniques on your own. Now, remember the only way to really learn from this is to go out there and try it yourself. So have fun with experimenting. Um, tag me in your stuff that you end up painting. I want to see it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and happy painting. Bye guys.